Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the Mike Francesa podcast, and welcome to the last Football Friday podcast of the season as we uh, preview the Super Bowl contest this weekend in Vegas between uh, Kansas City and San Francisco. I remember that Bet Rivers is offering a second chance bet on your first same game parlay on the big game. Place a qualifying same game parlay on the big game, and if your bet loses, you get a bonus bet equal to your wages. So you can't beat that. With your same game parlay bet, you also earn a square that can be worth as much as uh, $10,000. See the Bet Rivers app for full details and bet on the big game at Bet Rivers. And you know, if you've ever wanted to participate in one of those uh, boxes, those hundred square things you see somewhere that you might uh, frequent, whether it's a, a deli or a bar or a restaurant, and they have those Super Bowl boxes up. Um, they have the final score. So if you can pick the last two digits, you can make yourself a good amount of money because uh, the of the 100 possibilities, you know, zero through nine, zero through nine. Uh, and the more common ones are going to be the payoff less. So the, 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 the worst payoff is 22 to one. And that's on Kansas city, seven, San Francisco four. If you have four, seven, four, one, one, four, those are going to be a little less. If you put in something a little more exotic, you're going to get like 60 to one. You might even get more than that on some uh, 22 to one is the worst you could get. But a lot of times you'll get 50 to one, 60 to one if you can do it. Now, odds are you're not going to pick the final score, OK, or the last digit. I mean, that's just unlikely. But, hey, you might want to have a little fun with that. Um, there are so many different propositions you can, you know, if you like to throw a couple of bucks on one of those crazy things, you can. I would say this to you in going over the game. I will give you a couple of those props that have to do with football that I think are very possible and that are very hittable and can give you a parlay that can pay off, you know, really pay off very, very handsomely where if you put a hundred in, you could win, you know, four or $5,000. Um, the bottom line is, you have to look at it as you think the game's going to be played. But we'll get to that in a minute. It's been a quiet time. The only thing I've seen this week are, number one, Mahomes had to deal with the stuff with his father and the DWIs and the uncovering of past DWIs, which I don't know if you guys were aware about. I wasn't aware about how many DWIs have been. So uh, I'm sure he's had to deal with a little of that this week. San Francisco complained about their field condition. So one team is usually unhappy about something. They complained about their field condition. Um, other than that, it's been kind of quiet uh, as far as the teams are concerned. When you look at the game, I never thought San Francisco would edge anywhere near a three-point favorite. I don't think they will. It's been pretty much – it opened one and a half – or two, it went down to one, Kansas City favored one. Uh, San Francisco favored one. It went right back to two, and it stayed at two, and I don't think it'll get above two. It might go to two and a half in a couple of places, but I doubt it. It will never see three in this game. If you see three in this game, I'll be absolutely stunned. I don't think you'll do that. Um, I think the game should be pick them. I don't think Kansas City should be getting points. And frankly, I got to be honest with you, although you have to have great respect for everything San Francisco accomplished during the season and how explosive they are offensively and how dynamic they are offensively, and they are, they are an offensive juggernaut. But if you look at the anything about the teams, Kansas City's every bit the equal, if not the better, of the two teams. Here's a couple of things to look at. Number one, the pass they took here. San Francisco has been home for two games. They should have lost to Green Bay. And they were down 24-7 to the Lions. They have been poor defensively. They got their offense cranked up, and the Lions' defense is not any good, and especially against the pass. 
And they got their offense cranked up in the second half. And there was one terrible – there was a couple things that really hurt – the, the Lions was going for on fourth down, short field, and also the one turnover. It was a critical in the game. Um, the Chiefs have had as hard a road to get here as you could possibly have. I mean, I can't think of a team in recent years that's gone to a Super Bowl that has had a tougher path. I mean, to go through Buffalo on the road, and then Baltimore on the road to get here. You can't have a harder road to get to a Super Bowl. You could rank that with the toughest roads any team has ever faced to get to a Super Bowl. I mean, they beat a Raven team that was really good. They beat a good Buffalo team, and they beat an even better Raven team, which I understand you can talk about how the Ravens blew it how they didn't stay to their running game, how they got away from things that they've done all year, how they were stupid with the penalties, how they had the turnovers and the big mistakes and the flowers plays. You're absolutely right. They manhandled Kansas City in the second half of that game. They beat the heck out of Kansas City. and Kansas City held on for dear life. But they're here. And when you look at this game, Kansas City gets an edge in coaching. You got Andy and Spags who have been there, done that. You know Spags is going to have a good game plan. You know Andy is going to be ready. He's going to been he's been through this. He's a cool customer. He'll be a cool customer no matter what happens. You got to give the edge of coaching to them. Plus, remember, Shanahan's got a lot of baggage in this game already. He was the offensive coordinator when they lost from a, they blew a twenty eight three lead in Atlanta. And he blew a 2010 lead to the Chiefs in Miami with nine minutes left. He was up 20 to 10 in the game. And they gave up 21 points. Lost 31 20. So he's got some he's got some ghosts in the Super Bowl. So edge and coaching to me it goes to Kansas City. Edge and quarterback, duh. I mean, we don't do we have to discuss it? Edge and kicker, big edge, Kansas City. Edge and defense, again, Kansas City. Edge and offense, significant edge to San Francisco. They are legitimately a juggernaut offensively. But edge coaching, KC. Edge quarterback, KC. He's one of the great postseason quarterbacks ever. He's one of the great underdog quarterbacks ever. His numbers in both categories are astounding. Edge kicker, Kansas City. Edge defense with their young kids playing well and still the dynamic Chris Jones. Edge Kansas City. Kansas City's offense has sputtered a lot, and it sputtered in the second half of the AFC title game. They didn't score a point. They're not a great offensive team by any stretch of the imagination. But San Francisco's defense has not looked good in these playoffs. And I'll tell you right now, and this will play into what I talked about a little bit with the props. And I don't usually give you props or anything like that, but I'll give you a couple in this game. I think that Spags is going to take away McCaffrey in this game, a la taking a page out of the Belichick book. I think Kansas City will play a lot of Six-man fronts, I think they'll load up the box. I think they'll be, they'll have a couple of tricks up their sleeve in, in, in what they do with the seventh guy, moving them in and out, up and down. They'll take away the run and they'll say, hey, we're going to put this game in Purdy's hands. If you're going to win this game, you're not going to win this game running the ball with McCaffrey. You're not going to run the ball down our throat and then play action and beat us with the passing game and get big yards after catch after you shred the field because we had to bring everybody up to play the run. They're not going to do that. They're going to try and take the run away and they're going to say, go ahead. We're going to make you do everything through the quarterback. Now that doesn't mean McCaffrey's going to get zero yards. And I'm telling you right now, McCaffrey's going to catch the ball out of the backfield. I think a lot more than normal. 
I think he will be a guy who catches. So I think McCaffrey will have numerous receptions. I think he will go over his yardage for receiving. And I think Kittle will go over his yardage for receiving and over his number because it's going to be dinking it to McCaffrey and dinking it to Kittle. Because that's what Kansas City is going to give him. And I think that's where Purdy will wind up checking down to a lot as he tries to make plays in the middle of the field. He'll wind up hitting Kittle. He'll wind up dumping it to the back. And I think you'll see a lot of that. So those are the numbers I would put together. Kittle yardage, Kittle receptions, McCaffrey yardage, McCaffrey receptions. That's enough there to work on. I do not think you're going to have a huge McCaffrey running game. I don't think he's going to get 150 yards rushing in this game. I think they're going to take that away. Kansas City is going to try and run the ball more on them than you think, but you know Kansas City is also going to go to the passing game, but that's who they are. And Kansas City knows that if San Francisco thinks their big edge is their two pass rushes against their tackles. And let's be honest. Kansas City's missing their left guard. They are susceptible at the two tackle positions. They have a right tackle who led the NFL in penalties by a wide margin. He had 23 penalties this year, 12 false starts and nine holds. The other tackle had eight holds. They get a lot of penalties and they give up sacks on the, on the edges. That's where San Francisco is going to attack them. There's no question about that. They think they can get there. But Kansas City is going to say, okay, you're going to run those guys hard upfield. We're going to make you pay for that. That's going to be the cat and mouse game there. So watch them do a lot of quick stuff with Rice, quick stuff with Kelsey which is their want anyway. I think Rice becomes a critical guy in this game. You know Pacheco's going to get his chances to run the ball. We know that. They'll dump the ball to him. He'll have a couple of trick plays where he'll use his speedsters to try and see if they can break a couple of plays with RPOs, and he'll have a couple of those ready. He'll have some some real quick pass plays to Rice to try and break some plays on the edges with those. He'll definitely do that. There's no question about that. That's what Kansas City's become. But I think Rice is a critical guy in the Kansas City offense. Critical. And he's become very dependable. The two things Kansas City's done that they had a big problem with during the middle of the season when they were so inept, like when they played the Raider game and they were embarrassingly bad. They had an incredible number of drops. They have not been dropping the ball. Even Kelsey had drops. Everybody but Rice had drops. Everybody. Scantling had drops. He hasn't had drops in the postseason. Uh, Kelsey had drops. He hasn't had drops in the postseason. Matter of fact, he made some great catches in the Baltimore game. Rice has been shorthanded. They need, they've they been shorthanded, and they've cut down on their penalties in the postseason. But they've won with Mahomes making plays when he had to. They've won with defense, field position, and their kicking game. Their kick has been sensational. And their kicker has a big edge in this game. Now, perfect conditions. I don't think this will be a low-scoring game. And if somebody hits somebody for a couple of big plays, gets a big turnover, gets an easy score, gets a return, gets a tip ball, gets an easy touchdown, and this game opens up a little bit, both teams are capable of wide open play and scoring a lot of points. So if one team opens up a couple of touchdowns, the other team will come chasing after them. If, if, if somebody opens up a first half, a couple of score lead, the other team's going to come back on them. I don't think there's any question, no matter which way it would happen, the other team is capable of coming back. San Francisco is capable of coming back. You saw them come back from 24-7 down last week. Kansas City has been coming back forever. You know that. They don't ever consider themselves out of a game. 
But I think this game will be close. But I think when you see the subtle edges in this game, to me, they go to Kansas City. They did in the Buffalo game. To me, they went to Kansas City. In the Baltimore game, I thought that there was the game would be three points either way. I thought the game was a toss-up, and I thought you were getting four points, four and a half points by game time with Kansas City, and that's what you would grab the points. And listen, did I come away thinking that Kansas City was better than Baltimore? No. I think Baltimore was the most dominant team this year, and they should be ashamed of themselves for the way they played. And to get away from the running game the way they did, Harbaugh was going to be kicking himself all winter. I mean – The way they got away from the running game was just comical. But Kansas City forced them into it. They didn't have some success early, and all of a sudden they said, you know what, we're going to the passing game. Well, they should never have done that. They just said, stick to their knitting. When you have a big-time running game, you stick to your running game, and you just keep pounding the rock, and all of a sudden it breaks. But you have to have a belief in doing that. And Baltimore didn't. Baltimore broke. One thing Kansas City in the era of Reed Reed and Mahomes does not get enough credit for is how mentally tough this team is. They don't back down. They've been down a lot of times in these games, and they come back. They were down 10 points to the Niners in the Super Bowl in Miami. I was there. They were down 10 points. And they were on the verge of getting knocked out with nine minutes left. And Garoppolo missed pass plays he should have made, second and five, third and five, and they never forgave him for those pass plays. And then they hit that big play to Hill, and the floodgates opened. And the next thing you know, it went from 20 to 10 San Francisco to 20 to 17 to 24, 20 to 31, 20. And Kansas City was partying into the evening. Kansas City is on the verge of something very special here. Three Super Bowls. For a coach-quarterback tandem means immortality. Andy and Mahomes are both on the verge of immortality. When you win three Super Bowls, you separate yourself. There's a decent number of guys who have won two. There's only a handful of guys who won three or more. Obviously, Belichick. Obviously, Noel was four for four. Walsh has won three. Gibbs has won three. Winning three is special, and winning three as a quarterback puts you in very, very rarefied air. Brady, Bradshaw, Montana, three. Mahomes has a lot of career left. And you don't know how many more games he's going to get to. You know, we talk about it all the time. Dan Marino was in his second year, and they wound up being favored against a San Francisco team that Bill Walsh thought was the best team that he ever had. So think about that. The Dolphins were so good that year and so dominant that year that they were a one-point favorite against the San Francisco team that Bill Walsh thought was the best team he ever had. And San Francisco beat the Dolphins convincingly in that game. And while the Dolphins were down, Marino was anything but heartbroken because he thought, hey, I'm here in my second year. There's going to be a lot more of these games for me. And you know what? There never was another. Ever. He never got back to the Super Bowl. He never won a Super Bowl. He got to the Super Bowl in his second season, and he never got to another one. You don't know when you're getting back. 
And I guarantee you Mahomes is going to have a run here. Maybe it's after Andy retires. Maybe it starts with Andy in a couple of years where they are going to go into an era where they're not going to win for a couple of years. They're going to have some injuries and not make the playoffs one year. They're going to get knocked out of the playoffs in the first round one year. They're going to have those years. And before you know it, you'll say, wow, Mahomes hasn't been to a Super Bowl in four years or five years. It's going to happen. Because that's just the way the NFL is. Maybe Harbaugh is going to build the Chargers into something special. And they're going to compete with the, with the Chiefs in the West. Chiefs haven't had any competition in the West. Maybe now they will. Harbaugh's been a winner wherever he's been. He's an especially good NFL coach. He will do very well, I think, with, with the Chargers and, and, and with their quarterback, who he's already building up every day, if you notice. just building him up, building up. He's a special player. He's this. He's that. He's, a, he's already started building him up to get him where he wants him. So it's, it's not going to be like he's going to be there every year. But if he can win his third game on his fourth trip, he's already an immortal player before his career's half over. And Andy, remember, is already one of the winningest coaches of all time. He's the second winning as postseason coach of all time because there's more layers of, court of, of of games now. So there's, you know, Belichick's won the most games in the postseason and Andy's won the second most. And everyone always talks about how Andy couldn't win the big one. Well, they don't say that anymore because he's been to three Super Bowls and he's won two of them. So nobody says anything anymore. Now they just talk about how good he is and what he's built. And remember, Kansas City couldn't win forever. And when Andy... And Philly finally parted ways. And they said, you know what? We need to make a change here. And they weren't wrong. Maybe it was time there. Probably the best thing that ever happened to Andy. He was out of work a couple of hours. And Kansas City called up and said, hey, come here. Don't even go anywhere else. Just come here. He went there. And the rest is history. They have been a dynasty since he got there. They win double digits every year. And they have spent the last half dozen years in the AFC title game, and they've spent four of those years in the Super Bowl. And now they're on the, they're on the brink with a chance to win their third and four tries, which means immortality. So there's a lot on the line. There's a lot on the line for Shanahan. Shanahan's had some bittersweet times in this game. There's no way... There's no way that Atlanta coaching staff did one of the horrendous jobs in the history of professional sports with the way they coached that game from 28-3. I mean, they were there to build that 28-3 lead, but what they did afterwards was so patently dumb, it is hard to even fathom. If they had taken a knee the rest of the game and punted on fourth down, they would have won the game. Serious. They would have won the game. Instead, they didn't. That's how horrific it was. And then he had a 2010 lead with nine minutes left where, you know what? Hey, you got a 10-point lead in the fourth quarter of a Super Bowl game with nine minutes left. You're feeling pretty good about things. Next thing you know, that game was 31-20. Chiefs exploded for 21 points in the last eight minutes of that game. And Kansas City had the ball at 2010 with nine minutes left and had the ball at 2017 with five minutes left. 2017, have the ball with five minutes left. You get a couple first downs, it's your game. It wasn't. It wasn't to be. And now he gets to see if he can change that. Don't want to take anything away from San Francisco's offense. It's legit. It has a great player anchoring the line in Trent Williams. A great player. 
one of the best players in the NFL. It has a great running back in McCaffrey. Great player. It has a wonderful two-way tight end in Kittle. Wonderful player. It has two really good receivers in Debo who can run it and catch it. And Ayuku makes big plays. And Purdy, who's a underrated quarterback. How good is Purdy? I don't know if we know yet. But I think Spags is going to show us, you know what? I'm going to make Purdy beat us. You're not going to line McCaffrey up and pound us. We're going to take that away. We're going to make you look at our defense and throw the football. And beat us with your quarterback. And that's going to be fun to watch. Make the quarterback beat you. Because you don't want to make McCaffrey beat you because you know McCaffrey can beat you. We know how good McCaffrey is. Make Purdy beat you. Purdy still has things to prove. And he's going up against a generational giant in Mahomes. And Shanahan's going up against a generational giant in Reed. And don't discount Spags' role here because he's a wonderful big game defensive coordinator. He's got the pelts to prove it. Nobody's surprised San Francisco's here. I'm sure a bunch of people are surprised that Baltimore, including Baltimore, that they're not here. But how can, surprised can you be that Kansas City keeps getting here? And they do. And they deserve your respect. And they're a lot better on defense than people think. They got a lot of good young defensive players. And Chris Jones will be a free agent this year. And it'll be interesting to see how the Chiefs deal with that after this year's over. But Chris Jones has been a major force. People don't understand how good Chris Jones is. He anchors that defense. But they got a lot of good young players on that defense. At linebacker, in the secondary, really good players. A lot better than you think. Underrated, unknown, but good players who have really come up big in the playoffs. You know, they stiffened in the fourth quarter against Buffalo when they had to. And they made plays and forced turnovers when they had to against the Ravens. Does the chief defense bend but not break? Yeah, sometimes. It bends at times. It rarely breaks. And if you look at it, it doesn't give up a whole lot of points. Now, they're going against an offense that wants to hit you and hit you hard early. That's San Francisco's game. That's what San Francisco is going to try and do. They're going to try and come out and jump out in front because that's who they are. And when they don't do that, they're just not the same team. And let's be honest, they should have lost to Green Bay. Green Bay outplayed them. I thought they'd come back on Detroit. Detroit sure helped. But Detroit was incredibly vulnerable on defense, especially in that secondary. Incredibly vulnerable. Kansas City's defense is really a lot better than people think. It's underrated. So I think we should get a good game. I think we have two really good teams here. Teams that know their way around big games. Teams that have been there, done that. These two teams. Now, there's not a lot of players left. It just shows you the way football turns its teams over. About 20% a season. There's only a handful of players who were on the Chiefs when they beat the Niners in Miami. Only a handful. And it's the core guys. The guys you would expect. Only a handful. But that's the core. That's the nucleus. And they've added a lot of young players around that. And those young players, like Tranquil on defense, Sneed on defense, 
rice on offense. Their center, who's a very good young player. Key guys. And a lot of talent on that San Francisco offense. And again, a lot of it will come down to those guys, those edge rushes for San Francisco. They have got to beat those tackles up. If you don't see those guys beating up those tackles, if you don't have Romo telling you that Kansas City has to do something to help their tackles who are getting overrun, if you don't hear that, then Kansas City's defense is going to have a lot of trouble in this game. You need to hear that because that's where they know their edges are, is their rushes going against those tackles, those mistake-prone, very vulnerable tackles for the Chiefs. One guy's had 23 penalties on the season, 23 flags. I think the next highest in the league is 13. He's had 23, and I think it was – I think it was – uh, the big guy in the Jets. I think he's the guy who had second most. But he was 13, 23 for him. 12 false starts, nine sacks. I mean, nine holes. 23 t- flags. That's a lot of penalties. So I went with Kansas City. against Buffalo. I took the points for Kansas City against Baltimore. I'm staying with Kansas City here, getting two. I think the two is a plus. Um, I think Kansas City is going to edge them. I think it should be a really good game. I don't think it'll be a low-scoring game. I don't think it'll be a crazy high-scoring game. I think it'll probably be right around a number or right around 50 points overall. I don't think it'll be up in the 70-point total. I don't think it'll be down in the 35-point total. I think it's going to be right around 50-ish points. I don't like overruns anyway, so they don't appeal to me. I, I'd take Kansas City again. I think anytime you're getting Mahomes and points, you're stealing. And I actually think they're the stronger team, top to bottom. And I think they have another good game in them. We'll have our Super Bowl wrap-up for you right after the game. As soon as the game ends, as soon as uh, Jim and the folks hand out the trophy, we'll do a Super Bowl post-mortem for you coming up. So we'll be looking for that after the game Sunday night. Then it's on to... A couple of weeks of no NFL, but you can start to think about your team again and start to think about what they're going to do in the draft and what are they going to do in free agency and how are they going to manage their cap and how are they going to handle things as far as getting the right guys to make that leap that they hope to make. Jets are going to be very interesting to watch. Very interesting. And I'm telling you, they need to be working right from the start on that offensive line. There's guys in free agency they should be running after once the year opens in early March. Running after. And they should be taking a tackle either from Notre Dame or Penn State on the first round of the draft where they pick, one or the other. But it should be a tackle. That offensive line has to be fortified to the umpteenth degree. Nothing else should be thought about until that offensive line is completely revitalized. They do anything else, they're just plain stupid. We'll talk to you after the game Sunday night. Enjoy the game, everybody. Have a fun weekend with it. Have, a, I hope, a festive. You know, I always say this. There's two days if you're watching the game by yourself, you got to check your, you got to basically do a little checkup on your, uh, on what's going on in your life. That's New Year's Eve and Super Sunday. Nobody watches the game alone. If you are, you got to make some changes. You got to get with it a little bit because those are two t- days where you're just not supposed to be by yourself. 
New Year's Eve, and I'm not telling you you have to go out, but you know what? When the ball drops, there's got to be somebody there. Same thing on Super Sunday. Nobody's supposed to watch the game alone. Enjoy. We'll talk to you after the game.